Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. So Edgar Balanga moves to 22 wins with 17 KOs, no draws, no defeats. He knocks out uh, Pedro McCrory. Well, actually, it was a TKO if you want to be pedantic, but yeah, knocks him out. Let's call it a knockout in six rounds. Um, McCrory was also undefeated, 18-0 coming in. Um, and... McCrory had fought at 175 uh, not so long ago and then had moved back down to 168, which when you consider his age, um, I mean, McCrory's 35 now from Ireland. Um, you know, you thought he might have stayed at 175, but no, he moved back down. Maybe the, the offer was there, took on Belanga. It didn't go his way. Um, this was a slow burning fight, started off, First round, very, very little happened. Neither guy really threw many punches at all. I mean, you know, maybe three or four punches in the round, maybe. Um, you know, real punches, like scoring punches. And um, Belanga had, had previously had, 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 you know, five points decisions and the early power in his career uh, seemed to have disappeared or at least was hiding somewhere. Uh, if you look at, Belanga's last fight, it was against another Irishman, Jason Quigley, and he put him on the floor, I think, three or four times, um, but couldn't keep him there. Well, McCrory didn't go on the floor until the actual knockdown that ended the fight, um, which was towards the end of the sixth round. It was a, a huge sort of swinging right hand that came over and clocked McCrory on the jaw, side of the jaw, and knocked him sideways and really stung him. I mean, he, he struggled to get to his feet and then the towel went in. In the early rounds, like I say, not much was happening except a fair bit of dirty work going on. The head was going in from uh, Belanga. It was a low punch. McCrory was given time to recover. There was one big punch from Belanga. Uh, I think it was in, in the third round that stiffened McCrory's legs. And McCrory's got a hell of a jaw because Belanga, you know, he, he's got some wallop in his punches and he landed a brilliant left hook on the temple which normally scrambles your brains. But McCrory's legs did a little stutter step and he, he sort of retreated to the ropes, but he managed to soak it up. I think that was in the third round. Um, and then, like I say, there was some dirty work going on, some, some naughtiness. But, um, you know, it was it was all a bit, to start with, the first three rounds, it, like I say, it sort of built in, the, the fight sort of bubbled, if you like. You know, it was sort of simmered and then started to bubble a bit. Um and it was a bit stop-start, and I don't think the crowd were overly impressed for the first three rounds. But then once Belanga got his motor running, um, he was kind of you know, cutting off the ring quite well, pushing McCrory back, making McCrory think about everything that was coming straight at him. McCrory didn't seem to have much of a, a plan for offense. He was throwing those, you know, don't hurt me punches. And... This was a 12-rounder. It was an, a final eliminator for the WBC uh, title, 168 title. And afterwards, Eddie Hearn, uh, well, Belanga was asked about the, the Canelo fight. So was Eddie Hearn. And Hearn said, uh, you know, he's here if, if Canelo wants it. Will he get the call? I doubt it. I doubt it. I mean, Canelo talks about, you know, fighting. I want to fight Americans. I like beating up Americans. Christ knows he's beating up enough Brits. It's about time he picked on someone else. Um, and Belanga is, you know, he's, I think he's from Brooklyn originally, from New York, but he's of Puerto Rican um, descendancy. So, you yeah, know, yeah. Okay. Puerto Rico, Mexico. Well, Puerto Rico slash American versus Mexico. You, you could sell it, couldn't you? But I think definitely Benavidez, well, Benavidez is moving up to 175 to take on um, Gavosdik for the WBC light heavyweight in, interim belt, whatever the fuck that is. Um, so I guess Mungia would probably be ahead in the queue, but they could do worse than pick Belanga. Um, the only thing is, we're now, what is it, sort of, what are we in now? 25th of February today. 20th, 25th, uh, yeah. March, April, May. It's not a lot of time to get ready, is it? Maybe to go from one training camp to another. Belanga said he, he'd basically been on and off training for six months to fight McCrory. Um, but he's 26, he's a young man. So 
it's possible he could uh, he could squeeze in another fight within the next ten weeks. Yeah. As for McCrory, um, I mean, he's 35. It's going to be difficult to come back. He was undefeated. He didn't seem to have much of an idea of how to keep Belanger off him. I mean, he was switch hitting a lot from about the third round onwards, trying to trying to find some sort of key to the door, you know, some sort of way of keeping Belanger off him and make, keeping Belanger honest, trying to back him up a bit. But McCrory just he just couldn't find the answer and. I get the impression he kind of allowed because he because he couldn't find anything because he couldn't get any kind of rhythm going. He didn't seem to have any sort of plan to keep Belanger off him. It allowed Belanga to sort of warm into the fight and start to let his real hard punches go. He's swinging, thudding, very hurtful punches. Um, someone with a bit more power and a bit more savvy might be able to keep Belanga honest. Um, I wouldn't fancy Belanga's chances against Canelo. I think I would definitely pick Canelo to win. Uh, I'll definitely pick. I'll pick Benavides. Probably Munguia to be. I'd certainly, I'd, I'd certainly pick, pick David Morel, who I'm very high on to pick Belanga. I mean, I would say Belanga's probably. I, I think Caleb Plant would be a good, good, good opponent for Belanga. Um, he's only twenty six, so. Putting him in with Canelo in May, I'm not so sure about that. I'd, I'd wait. I'd wait. I'd like to see him in with a a couple of the sort of B level, you know, the very good super middleweights, B B plus. Because um, McCrory, decent fighter, just like Jason Quigley was a decent fighter, but these guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make them more than the B minus level, untested largely, even though he was undefeated. So for me, um, although I would say Belanga's a good fighter, the jury is sort of out a little bit, still not quite. They haven't quite made up their mind, the jury, in my head. Uh, but he is a good fighter. He's fun to watch because um, of the power. But he, need, he, needs to get, he needs to get moving quicker. I mean, that Quigley fight was back in June of last year. So he's had a fair bit of time out. I think keeping the momentum going is a good thing, but I wouldn't put him in with Canelo next, to be honest with you. I wouldn't. No, I'd like to see him in with a couple of top tenors and then make a run at the belts. And if Canelo chucks the belts up in the air and retires eventually or moves up to, you know, to light heavy, maybe to take on Bivol again later, further down the line, you know, Belang could win a belt. Um, but I don't see any hurry to put him in with Canelo, not just yet, you know. Anyway, what do you think? What did you think of this fight? Let me know your opinions. Um, thank you for your time, as always, for watching the video. Like the video if you liked it. Hit that like button. And also, uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because that helps us out a great deal too. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and bye for now.